full of ugly sights and ghastly dreams. What was your dream? I long to hear you tell of it. I thought I had broken from the tower and was embarked across to Burgundy. And in my company, my brother Gloucester, who from my cabin tempted me to walk upon the hatches. And as we paced along the giddy footing of the hatches, methought Gloucester stumbled and in falling struck me that thought to sting him overboard into the tumbling billows of the main. Lord, Lord, methought what pain it was to drown, what dreadful noise of waters in mine ears, what ugly sights of death within mine eyes. I thought I saw a thousand fearful wrecks, ten thousand men which fishes not upon, wedges of gold, great anchors, heaps of pearls, inestimable stones, unvalued jewels, all scattered at the bottom of the sea. Some lay in dead men's skulls, and in those holes our eyes did once inhabit, as twere in scorn of eyes there were reflecting gems which wooed the slimy bottom of the deep and mocked the dead bones that lay scattered by. I woke you not with a sore agony. Oh, no, my dream was lengthened after life. Then began the tempest of my soul, which passed me thought the melancholy flood with that grim ferryman which poets write of unto the kingdom of perpetual night. The first that did greet my stranger's soul, a shadow, like an angel, bright hair dabbled in blood, and squeaked out aloud, Clarence is come, false, fleeting, perjured Clarence that stabbed me in the field of Tewkesbury. Seize on him, Furies, and take him to your torments. And with that, methought a legion of foul fiends environed me about and howled in my ears such hideous cries that with that I trembling waked, and for a season after I could not believe but that I was in hell. Oh, marvel, my lord, though it afraid you. I promise I am afraid to hear you tell it. Oh, God, if my deepest prayers cannot appease thee, but thou wilt be avenged on my misdeeds, oh, spare my wife and my poor children execute thy wrath in me alone. Gentle keeper, please stay by me. My soul is heavy, and I fain would sleep. Well, my lord, God grant your grace good rest. Oh, who's here? In God's name, what are you? How came you hither? I am to speak with Clarence, and I came hither on my legs. Yea, are you so brief? <laughs> oh, sir, it's better to be brief than tedious. Or a commission, talk no more. I am in this commanded to deliver the noble Duke of Clarence to your hand. Ah, I'll not meddle with it. 
It's a dangerous thing. A man cannot steal, but it accuses him. He cannot swear, but it checks him. He cannot lie with his neighbor's wife, but it detects him. It made me return a purse of gold that I found once. It beggars any man that keeps it. And any man that means to live well endeavors to entrust himself and live without it. Spoken like a tall man who respects his reputation. Come, shall we do this gear? Yes, take him over the costard with the hilts of thy sword, and we'll drown him in the mouth of you with it. <laughs> oh, excellent device. Make a stop of him. <laughs> Hark ye, sir, shall I strike? Nay, first let's reason with him. You are up, though, Keeper. Bring me a cup of wine. I shall have wine it up, my lord, and on. <laughs> <laughs>